so if, if, if these are the hip sockets and he's like this, you're measuring the straight leg raise over here. Yep. So my question is going to be in regards to like a bone stress injury. Um, so I had a young gentleman come in yesterday, um, 17 years old, for a left tibia stress fracture. Um, he was on the right oblique axis, wide ISA. Um, so like pre-exposure to this model, my mindset from like a treatment standpoint would have been, all right, so like bony injury, like to have to generate like some sort of like osteoblastic activity to start to form like that healing process. Um, so almost like load it up and just get as much load as we can through that bone in a pain-free manner um, to generate that response. Um, but now I'm kind of thinking I want to like confirm the thought process a little bit um, that like maybe it's a yielding issue. Um, from like a connected tissue standpoint, he just didn't have the capacity to distribute the load, whatever he was doing a lot of track workouts um, when like the injury started. Um, so is, would you kind of think about it the same way? Is there a, cause I guess those two kind of thoughts kind of go against each other in my mind. Like on the one hand, if I was going to load it, probably creating a stiffer response, which he's already probably pretty good at. On the other hand, if I'm not going to be loading it and going more for the yielding side of it, um, then I maybe don't get as much of that osteoblastic activity from like a bony healing standpoint, um, but I get the, the yielding response I'm looking for. So do you view it as two extremes, like one or the other, those kind of have a place together in this plan of care. Uh, okay, so, so think about what got him there. High force, right? Mm -hmm. High force strategy, is it gonna work for you? I'm sorry? A high force strategy, is that gonna work for you? Because since that's what got him to you. Probably not. Okay, but you can apply it differently, can't you? Uh, How long is this ground contact time? Uh, very brief. Okay, so what if you still apply the force over a longer duration? In terms of just in like a traditional, like a weightlifting? No, I'm not saying that. Doesn't mean you can't, just means like, when, when you think about like what got him there, all right? And so when you apply a force at a high rate of, the, at, at, at a higher rate, so I'm applying the force over a shorter period of time, mm -hmm. what happens to the viscoelastic tissues? Stiffens up. Yeah. And so that's what happened, right? Bone gets really, really stiff and it responds as something that is stiffer. So it's the silly putty that snaps clean, right? On a, on a line. But if I start to progressively load that and I do it over a longer duration, what will, what will happen in, in the case of a viscoelastic tissue? Not as stiff. Right. So, so, I, so I start to create a yield, right? And I start to distribute the force. So what you have is a representation of a very, very focal force application on the bone. What I want to do right, right off the bat, first and foremost, is I want to teach him how to distribute that. One, it's going to help alleviate a lot of the symptoms, right? So I get less focal load, right? Um, there might be some, some shape issues associated with foot position, tibia orientation, femur orientation, pelvis orientation. You still have to address those, right? And then you got to bring him back to have the ability to apply the same force that brought him to you, but maybe teach him how to distribute that a little bit more effectively, right? So maybe it's capturing enough internal rotation somewhere that he doesn't have to try to do it through a bone, right? So he, he learns how to distribute that force a little bit more effectively, right? So you're not wrong, like you need both, Yeah. Right? but when you think about the initiation of, of the treatment, it's like, don't, don't do the same thing that got him there, right? Because chances are that's not like, it's like, uh, uh, how do you fix a hangover? You, you drink more alcohol, right? Yeah. It's like not usually the best solution. Um, and I'm not speaking from experience at all. Uh, but but uh, no, it's like your, your, your thought process is, is pretty solid just change the application, right? Because um, you've got a lot of options here. And chances are um, he doesn't respond well to one of them, which is apparently is like the high rate, high force. Because mm -hmm. he's not distributing it well. Gotcha. Does that 
Does that make sense? Yeah, and then just a couple of follow-ups to that. One, just from a conceptual standpoint, like with the right oblique axis, um, I know it's going to depend on like a lot of other factors because obviously this is on the left side for him. Would you expect the tissues to be behaving more stiffly in general on the right side because you're coming up and over onto the right, so like that's under more load, or does that make sense that like it's on the left it's side? Gonna, yeah, it's going to depend on where he is with his center of gravity. Right. You know? And so again, um, I think Alex was just talking about somebody that was probably a pretty clean looking right oblique initially. They could, they'd have a lot of ire on the right side and limited ire on the left side. So I think, um, yeah. He was he was limited IR on the right and had more IR on the left. Okay, so he's okay. So all right, so here you go. Why do you have more IR on the left where it should have disappeared, right? That's was one of my points of confusion. <laughs> okay, so think about this. Is it coming from the hip? I'm gonna guess no. You're gonna guess no. <laughs> okay, so so think about the orientation and and so. What should have dropped off is is hip IR on the left side, right? That's that's what typically what you're going to see from a process standpoint. So, I will give you a hint, Zach. It's probably not coming from the hip. Okay, so where's it coming from? Is it like an orientation of the lumbar spine? Yeah, yeah. So when you move the hip, the pelvis is already going forward. The spine turns away from you as you measure the internal rotation. So you get a magnification. Even, even if it's like, if you got like zero right and you get 20 on the left and you go, well, that's not an exaggerated internal rotation measure. Yes, it is because he shouldn't have any, right? So you got a spine that's turning away from you as you're measuring that, that left hip IR. So now think about the orientation of the pelvis how do I get, how do I get internal rotation on, on this side of the pelvis when I don't have any internal rotation here? So I'm going to do that, right? So now I got an acetabulum that's facing straight down and I'm jamming this leg into the ground. Seems like a, a recipe for maybe a little bit of bony stress, perhaps. Just a little right? bit. Maybe, right? Yeah. So think about this though, same guy could have come in complaining about like a left-sided lower back pain, right? Or left SI joint pain or something like that. If he was distributing the load there, he decided to try to dissipate it through the tibia under these circumstances for whatever reason, right? Yep. And by, by, so by that same thought process, as far as how he's getting the IR on the left by turning the lumbar spine, does that mean his right hip ER already limited, which kind of um, is even more limited because is that magnified because of that turn? Maybe so, maybe so. Right. But but what you might end up with, and this this will this will be a little potentially a little confusing, is you might go, but he's got a lot of hip flexion, hmm. right? It seems like he might have more hip flexion than he should, or he's got a little bit more straight leg raise than than you than you thought he would have. Yeah, he he's got like ninety degree straight leg raise on both sides. Yeah. So you, so but you're but here's so if, if if these are the hip sockets and he's like this, you're measuring the straight leg raise over here. Yep. So you see you see what you see what I'm saying? It's like he's got his pelvis, he's oriented on this oblique. The left acetabulum is far enough to point downward. So your straight leg raise, he's laying on his right side and you're doing a straight leg raise off this plane over here. 